I ran my computer all night on an experiment to find the perfect parameters for creating Dream Booth animations. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you what they are. I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Look, here they are, okay? Here are the results. This isn't, we're not gonna do that. I don't, why is it even acceptable to do that? I don't know. Cutting the long story short, you wanna use zoom within 5% of one. So like 0.995 or 1.005, and you wanna use strength of like 0.6, okay? That's what you want. That's what you want to do. That's what you want to use. Um, there. Good. You have it now. Okay, but what's going on here? What's zoom? What's strength? What's consistency? What's quality? What's going on here? All of this is like deforum terminology. So deforum, that's the way that people usually make animations with stable diffusion. It's like the best framework out there. It's like the most mature. Um, and this is kind of how it works. You, let's say you're trying to generate the next frame in your animation. You take in a prompt. Um, usually this prompt carries across many frames and you take the previous frame and Stable Diffusion does its image to image process and you, you get out the next frame and this next frame is then of course fed back in and it becomes the previous frame and then over time you end up with an animation and everything is, is nice and good. Um, so what's strength? Strength basically is like similarity, right? With a strength of 100 Stable Diffusion will do nothing, and the frame you get out will actually just be the frame that you put in, right? So strength 100 tells Stable Diffusion you're not allowed to touch anything, just output exactly the same frame. Strength of 0 tells Stable Diffusion, ah, actually, don't pay any attention to the input at all, and just use the prompt, and only the prompt, to generate from nothing a completely new frame. Okay, so that's what the strength setting does. Okay, and why is it so hard to choose strength? Well. Basically, if you make your strength too low, then the images from one image to another are too dissimilar. And you end up getting animation that just sort of jumps around and it's really hard to follow what's going on. And if you make the strength too high, the stable diffusion algorithm is very limited in what it can produce, right? You're giving it an input image and you're asking the stable diffusion to stay almost identical to that input image. And over time, because it's being limited so much, Stable Diffusion starts creating all these strange artifacts that look really bad. So this is what happens when the strength is too high. This is what happens when the strength is too low. Um, you have to find the perfect medium in between of those. Through my experiments, which I'll get into exactly how I did them later, I found that basically strength of 0.6 or like 0.7, around that area, 0.5, this is where you get the best results. Um, we'll get into this graph later, I promise you. Uh, and then, of course, there's this zoom thing, which is one of the different sort of, you know, faux camera movement settings that's in Deforum. You got zoom, translation X, translation Y angle. Um, in this case, we're just looking at zoom. And basically what happens here is that when you have the zoom setting on, um, before feeding in the previous frame, you, you zoom it in or zoom it out. Um, a certain amount before passing it in and therefore the frame that comes out at the end um, looks similarly zoomed out except that stable diffusion you know you can see there's now this sort of dead space around the frame stable diffusion will go ahead and fill that in with something and that way you know you get slowly over time each time you zoom in a little bit more um, stable diffusion has a bit more room to play with and a bit more stuff to generate so for instance here are two videos with really high strength but the zoom on this video is significantly faster. And as a consequence, it takes a lot longer in this video, the, the higher zoom video, for the artifacts to start emerging. Whereas in the video with almost no camera movement, the artifacts emerge instantly and start ruining the experience. So that's what zoom's about. What you're really looking for when you're making a deform animation is as high of consistency as you can possibly manage without creating artifacts. And usually what this means for me is tinkering around with strength and zoom, you know, changing different values and then waiting 10 minutes each time for the animation to render and then realizing it doesn't quite work and then repeating that process again and again and having a bad time. Okay, so now armed with a little context, what the hell is going on here? What I did is I took eight different reasonable zoom values and I took six different reasonable strength values and I paired them all up and for each one of them I generated a video. You can see all the videos here. You can also see them online. I've, I've, I've made a link. and you can, you can check my workings and tell me that I'm wrong. I rated them for consistency and quality, with consistency meaning 
that the image doesn't jump around too much and that entities seem to persist over time, and quality meaning that the images seem to look good. So for instance, let's have a look at this one here, uh, 0.06 strength, 0.99 zoom, and this is the video, right? You can see it's fairly consistent. The guy seems to persist over time. You're looking at the same guy most of the time. And the image quality looks kind of good. Each image sort of, sort of looks nice. We're not looking at any artifacts or blurring or anything. Well, not much at least. And because of that, we've given it like a pretty high consistency and like um, a pretty high quality. These are just subjective ratings though. You know, they're not like a perfect measure by any means. Just, just for the sake of argument, let's go and check out a bad one. So 0 0.07, 0 0.085 and see what we can find here. 07.85, and again, you can look these up online. Yeah, and so this is quite bad. Uh, the consistency is very bad. There's maybe like a split second where you can see a single entity persisting for. And the quality is also bad because you can see that there's a lot of artifacts and most of the screen is made up of this sort of like blurred uh, background that doesn't look like anything at all. So this is an example of a video that didn't turn out quite well. Um, you can go ahead and re-rate these, or maybe just use the videos yourself to get an idea of where you should use strength and, and zoom. Um, basically, I found that anything below 0.097 zoom is like bad, right? And this would probably work for panning and rotation as well, right? In general, you want to keep your camera movement within 3% of, of 1, you know, either, either in or out. Anything below that and the quality will start dropping dramatically. Um, similarly, with strength, I found that anything above 0.7 kind of gives you some very bad results. I mean, we saw before, you know, all of it just becomes very blurry and you get these lines very, very quickly and it looks like, like a very unpleasing thing to look at. So you kind of want to stay in this, like, in this quadrant here. And possibly, you know, you can even use lower amounts of zoom than this. The golden ratio seems to be 0.99 zoom, 0.6 strength, where you get this very high quality and this very high consistency. That seems to be around the area where you should make your videos. And that's all I have. All of this graph, everything, it's in the description. Um, call to action, bloody, make something, okay? No commenting or subscribing, none of that. Make something. Use this. Use this graph, build something, and then link it, then at me. That's the call to action, okay? You've watched this video, and by doing so, you've incurred a debt to the Koi Boy channel, which I will extract from you. And the price is you have to make a deform animation, okay? Either make one or watch out. Those are your options.